Donc c'était à 2 heures du matin qu'on a entendu les gens crier que au secours, au secours, lorsqu'on est sorti, nous avons vu qu'il y avait des bordements de l'eau de l'autre côté là-bas. Il y avait la maison qui s'est écoulée euh, dans la pluie. Le matin, nous sommes allés là-bas, nous avons remarqué qu'il y avait des morts. Les secours ils sont venus mais en retard. Ils sont venus seulement à 4 heures et notre père, ils sont venus avec les, les gens qui ont venu seulement maintenant à 4 heures. Non, ce sont des constructions anarchiques. Ça fait très longtemps que les textes de l'État nous interdisent de nous installer ici. C'est interdit, mais les gens s'efforcent de, de, de s'installer ici puisqu'ils manquent de moyens d'aller ailleurs. The festive season is well and truly over on the east coast of the United States. The big freeze continues to wreak havoc with wind chills forecast to fall as low as minus 40 degrees Celsius in places. The storm that delivered the wintry deluge has battered coastal communities in Massachusetts. 
Near Boston, frozen floodwaters left an entire street full of parked cars trapped in ice. Traveling by air hasn't been easy either. On Friday, more than 1,300 U.S. flights had been canceled by the afternoon, most of them at the New York area's three major airports and Boston Logan International. With temperatures set to plunge further, the weather's already been blamed for at least 18 deaths in recent days. Chicago hasn't escaped the cold snap, not exactly a happy start to the new year. A large chunk of North America was already in a deep freeze. Now the northeast coast is being hit particularly hard from a winter blizzard. Massachusetts bearing the brunt of it, blowing snow made for near whiteout conditions. Along the coastal regions of the state, there was icy flooding. In the seaside town of Situate, Massachusetts, boats were seen floating in icy waters. All of the northeast of the U.S. was hit with what meteorologists were loosely calling a snow hurricane. It closed many schools and government offices. In New York, heavy snow and particularly high winds nearly brought the city to a halt. And by afternoon, most businesses had closed up for the day. The mayor declared a winter storm emergency and asked residents to stay indoors. This is a serious, serious storm between the the very low temperature, the strong winds, the driving snow, everyone should take this one very seriously and take precautions. The conditions brought airports to a standstill. Thousands of flights canceled in the Northeast, leaving travelers either queuing up to rebook or stranded, unsure of when they might be able to fly. Our flight was canceled and we never got any information that was being canceled. And now we're delayed and we're not sure if we're going to be flying out of here anytime soon. Further south in Georgia, water fountains were no match for the cold, a rare sight where temperatures this low are highly unusual. This is the first time, first time in five years I've seen snow or even cold and ice as much as it is. But back up in the northeast, the situation could get worse overnight. The governor of Massachusetts saying Friday likely won't be any better. If a foot of snow wasn't enough, the forecast predicts single-digit temperatures to move in on Friday. A storm that hit hard, and with temperatures now expected to dip down again to minus 20 degrees Celsius and below, there seems little chance of much melting away. Gabriel Lozondo, Al Jazeera, New York. It is 8 degrees Celsius, and this poor little guy is frozen. He's not dead, so I'm going to be brave and pick him up. South Floridians aren't the only ones not used to this chilly weather. With falling temperatures also comes another unusual sight. As temperatures dipped to nearly 40 degrees Fahrenheit in Florida on Thursday, January the 4th, some of the Sunshine State's more exotic residents began to suffer from the cold. Put them in the sun. Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission warned residents that iguanas, which are native to Central and South America, start to become sluggish below 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Hey little guy, you just sleep there. And could freeze in lower temperatures. Locals shared many videos on Twitter helping the cold stunned iguanas warm up in the sun. <laughs> I don't like you, but I don't want you to die. The harsh winter weather that's been blanketing parts of the U.S. and has been blamed for at least 12 deaths is now dumping snow and ice across parts of the south that rarely sees flurries, let alone accumulation. The sub-zero temperatures has left citrus farmers in Florida taking drastic measures to protect their trees. Parts of the nation's northernmost states are in contrast, basking in unusually balmy conditions. Some parts of Anchorage had temperatures closer to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. The National Weather Service says it's about twice as warm as normal. I'm from the Bitterroot Valley in Montana, and it's colder there today than it is here in Alaska, and my children that are there are all jealous because I've got 40 degree temperatures here. I, I expected to come up here and freeze to death all winter. I'm heading home in the spring, and I hoped I lived through the winter, but now it's like, hey, this is great. <laughs> it's nice to be out in the fresh air and looking at the mountains and the sky and it's beautiful here. 
I guess for January it's pretty unusual. Uh, usually it can be like negative 30 around this time of the year, February, January time frame. So this is a little um, warm right now. No, I just think that maybe they, sometimes they get their little taste of it for a while. <laughs> The bill is in for America's 2017 of wild weather and the sums are astronomical with damage from weather and climate disasters estimated at 16 billion dollars. 2017 was the third warmest year on record for the United States which was tortured by drought, fire, hurricanes and floods and the effects were felt disproportionately wherever the pace of development like on Houston's floodplain has outstripped environmental considerations. Infrastructural damage and lost production added to the bills while at the same time the US government pulled out of the Paris Climate Accords and reopened land and sea concessions to oil and gas exploration calling climate science a fraud that would load extra costs onto American businesses. Few however seem to want to discuss the rising costs of natural disasters.
storm Eleanor continues to wreak havoc in Europe. In France, a skier died on the slopes after he was hit by a falling tree in the Alpine resort of Morbihan. The Alps region is running its highest alert for the risk of avalanches. In all, 30 people were injured four seriously in storms in northern and eastern regions of the country, and 20 departements are on maximum alert due to high winds. The storm also caused damage in Corsica, where six houses and several acres of land were destroyed by fires in the north of the island. Residents on the Atlantic coast and the English Channel are on high alert due to a risk of flooding caused by heavy rains and high seas. The storm has cut power to 200,000 households in northern France and is set to move to other regions throughout the day, with households in the Normandy region the worst hit. Rail and air traffic has also been disrupted. Even the capital Paris was affected as violent winds caused the closure of the Eiffel Tower. In the Netherlands, winds reached a speed of nearly 200 kilometers an hour. Elsewhere in Europe, in Belgium, Switzerland and Germany, the storm knocked down trees, caused power failures and disrupted traffic. But Great Britain suffered the worst damage with major flooding and extensive destruction. A harbour wall collapsed in Cornwall, taking down hundreds of tonnes of masonry, while winds of up to 127 kilometres per hour lashed Wales, leaving hundreds of homes without power and hitting transport links. Much of Europe is on high alert this weekend as severe weather wreaks havoc. In Slovenia, in northern Italy, more than two meters of snow fell in a few hours overnight. Several days of heavy, wet snow have already set off one avalanche that killed a German woman and her daughter on an off-piece ski run. In southwestern Germany, heavy rainfall has caused widespread disruption to a number of cities hit by flooding. The threat of landslides has forced authorities in many areas to issue evacuation orders. A number of roads have been destroyed and shipping traffic on the River Rhine between France and Germany has been halted because of the high tide. It's a similar situation in the French capital where heavy rain has caused the River Seine to rise by more than three meters. With more downpours expected this weekend, officials say they've readied emergency measures in case of flooding. Poland, however, is experiencing unusually warm weather that's led flowers to bloom in parks and gardens across the country. Winter weather has caused chaos in parts of Europe. In Paris, as water levels rose to new highs, roads and walkways were closed along the Seine River. A flood monitoring agency predicted that the Seine would top 4.5 meters by Wednesday before stabilizing. Heavy snow brought parts of Spain to a standstill over the weekend. Over 3,000 cars were stuck on the AP6 motorway in the northwest on Saturday night as they waited for rescue services to shovel out the snow. The road runs from the capital, Madrid, to the northwestern Galicia region. Germany's Rhine River was closed to shipping on Monday after rain pushed water levels up, the country's inland navigation authority confirmed. There were fears the high water wouldn't leave vessels with enough space to sail under the waterway's bridges. But it's not all cold and rainy weather. Temperatures in Budapest on Monday hit unusual highs of around 8 degrees Celsius. Local residents donned sunglasses and braved leaving their thick coats at home. However, snow is expected to return by the end of the week.
свободные милицы. The first day of the new year brought flash floods to three districts in Johor, forcing 188 people to seek shelter at relief centres. Heavy downpour since late Sunday evening caused floods in Labis, Kota Dinghi and Mersing on Monday. State Health, Environment, Education and Information Committee Chairman Dato Ayub Rahmat said 173 victims from 46 families in Mersing have been relocated to relief centres in the district. Meanwhile, Mersing Works Department announced on its Facebook page that part of Jalan Jemaruang Mersing was flooded and can only be used by heavy vehicles. The department urged drivers to use alternative routes to get to Mersing Town. Wow. 
哇，那个油桶都出来了，没办法了，走不了了。The first snowfall of 2018 has proven deadly in East China's Anhui province. A woman was killed and over 20 others were injured after at least five bus stop ceilings collapsed. The city of Hefei has been hit by heavy snowfall since Wednesday. People have been taking public transport during the city's morning rush hours. As passengers waited for a bus on Wednesday, the accident happened. A billboard damaged by snow fell onto the bus stop. The injured were rushed to a nearby hospital. A 61-year-old woman died despite receiving medical treatment. City authorities say a thorough investigation of the incident has been launched. Schools and kindergartens have been suspended. People are reaching out to help others during the blizzard. Photos and videos of a police officer lifting broken wires to help vehicles pass underneath recently went viral. Chinese netizens praised the public worker for his extraordinary service. I was just doing my job to ensure smooth and safe travel for people. Another snow-related accident occurred in Nanjing on Thursday. A snow-laden tree hit a passing sedan. Luckily, no one was injured. I saw it coming and slapped hard on the brakes, but the road was too slippery, and I heard the tree go bam on my windshield. It was completely shattered. Nanjing is expected to experience more snowfall later on Thursday. Local authorities have warned residents and tourists to remain cautious. Sun Tianyuan, CGTN.
Record high temperatures in Australia have sparked bushfires across three states in the southeast, burning homes and other buildings to the ground. Firefighters have been battling blazes whipped up by high winds throughout the weekend. On a day of what's been described as catastrophic conditions, a wall of flames tore through more than 8,000 hectares. Emergency warnings were issued in Victoria, where residents in rural areas were advised to evacuate homes and seek shelter as the fires encroached. Away from the countryside, and the authorities have had to transfer scores of homeless people to hospitals for treatment, as temperatures in the city of Sydney reached a scorching 47.8 degrees Celsius. In September 2017, Australians were warned to prepare for a dangerous bushfire season after one of the driest winters on record. It's a holiday washout as far as the eye can see. Caravans afloat on the Firth of Thames. Many homeowners fearing no better. In Kaioa, civil defence is in top gear, trying to contact the isolated occupants of around 500 homes dotted along the coastline. Until we can get through to some of those pockets of the communities is, is just take care of yourself, make sure that you're looking after your neighbours and any vulnerable people around you. Some roads closed by flooding, the local fire station and primary school now shelters for those forced to evacuate. There's a number of people in there now just being taken care of by that, um, by the fire force and, and the community members. It's tough going across the Firth of Thames too. The state highway north shredded in places by the stormy seas, forcing 60 people to take refuge at a hall in Tipuru. The wild weather leaving this truck precariously balanced on the Korpu Bridge and whipping up usually calm bays around Auckland. Flooded motorways slowed traffic to a near standstill on Auckland's North Shore and startled a family awake in Remuera. Next thing I know, I see the big tree go flying past my window and I go, uh-oh, what's happened now? And the bad weather appears to be hindering attempts to stabilise this massive landslip. Locals tell us around 9 o'clock last night in the driving rain, about 8 metres of land on the far side of those cones went crashing down into the gully. And while some are revelling in the effects of the wild weather, in Kaiowa tonight there's concern for those it's left isolated and vulnerable. Nicole Bremner, One News. de frente, 2500 metros de frente. 2800 venidos.
que por lo que es arena, pero ya aflojó la arena. En mi casa igual aquí a la vueltita, uno igual se metió. Y, y es pe, no es que ablanda, no es que es puro arena aquí. Sí, a pasar a toda arena. Ajá, a, a pasar a todo dar es pe. Pues uno pasa de pasillo, así va la movilidad y va hundiendo. Ya está entrando el agua al motor. ¿no? Ajá, si usted no se no prende ni cagando ya, pues. Ya, 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 ya,